Time management for Amazon FBA can be a really tricky proposition. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I was able to run my Amazon FBA business on 15 to 20 hours a week when I was a new parent. My name is Manny and this is Manny's Book Bag. What's going on everybody? My name is Manny and I am back with another video. We are now smack in the middle of summertime and it happens every single year, but during summer, my business takes a hit and it's not because of cash flow. It's not because of lack of resources. It's certainly not from a lack of places to go source. The main resource that I am lacking in the summertime is time. This was enough time, Michael. It was enough time. School is out. I am the primary caregiver for my children during the week, and there is just not enough hours in the day to get the job done. So in this video, I'm going to share a couple of tips and tricks with you to help you manage your time a little more efficiently. But before I can go on with this video, there's a couple of things that I need to take care of here at home. I got to get my kids out of bed. I got to get them fed breakfast and I got to take care of our dogs from there. Uh, it's going to be a pretty full day because we need to do quite a bit of sourcing. And if time allows, uh, hopefully I can get some shipping done as well. We'll see how it goes. Two hours later. So part of my job as a parent is to make sure that I give the love of reading to my children as well. So I had to come in here and we had to renew a book for her summer reading program. But as you can see, I'm gonna try and see if I can source something while we're here. Let's see what we find. found one.
favorite. All right, well, we just got out of the final stop of the day, uh, found another nine books at that thrift store. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and call it quits uh, as far as sourcing. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go ahead and sort all the books that we got today according to their condition. Uh, how many books did we find today? 55. Including those nine? Yep. 55 total? Oh, that's no big deal. 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to sort them by condition. I'm going to use Turbo Lister today, and I'm going to go ahead and list everything, box them up, and let's ship them out. We're going to be able to make some money today. That is the beauty of a great workflow. And I'm home. I've already taken my books, and I've sorted them according to their condition. I've got them over there. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? I need to take them upstairs to my office up in the loft and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring you into my disgusting office because I got to get these things listed and out the door because they're worthless to me sitting over there. Well here we are, I'm in my loft, I got to get these books listed, I'm not going to waste any time. 20 minutes later. I went ahead and I created the shipment and it's all going to the local warehouse which is awesome but it's also something that's been happening lately. Go ahead and put in the comments below, have you noticed that there's been a lack of split shipments from Amazon ever since they changed their uh, warehousing policy? Go ahead and put in the comments below and remember to like this video if you agree with me. Well now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to box these up and I'm going to take care of a couple things around the house, but we now have plenty of time before the 6 o'clock deadline at my local UPS store to drop these off. See you guys in a bit. Alright, well I'm all done with the shipment. Apparently we had a miscount because there were a total of 56 books that we sourced today and we went ahead and listed them and because of the weight I went ahead and I split them off here into two boxes. Box content is easy enough to learn uh, regardless of which listing service you use and quite honestly it's well worth learning how to use it so that you don't have to stick to the one box method and potentially sit back on books that you really do want to get into the warehouse. In this case, there were a couple of really heavy textbooks that were pushing the weight, and right now is really the time to get them into the warehouse anyway. So I just went ahead and did the box contents. It only took me a couple extra minutes, and I still had plenty of time to take care of the family, get everybody fed, and get my oldest daughter ready for AAU basketball tonight. So it's time to drop these off, and I'll catch up with you folks in a little bit. And that's just how I do it. I get up every day, I keep my kids on a very solid routine, and from there, I do my best to take care of the business. Now, I went ahead and I got ambitious and I shipped out those books today just to show you that a really solid workflow for Amazon FBA can take care of a lot of your time constraints. That's not the way that I prefer to do business. I prefer to ship 100 or 200 books at a time because I find that it's a little more efficient for me in the overall workflow for the week. The fewer times that I have to stop to ship, the more time that I can generally spend sourcing and spending time with my family. Unfortunately, I knew that today was going to be cut kind of short because my oldest child has to go to basketball practice and that always cuts my uh, my day off early. So I figured why not come on home, ship out these 50 or 60 books and show y'all how quickly I can do it. Well, it worked out just right. Everything got taken care of and my books are on their way to the Amazon warehouse. But make no mistake, if I did not invest in my workflow, make my workflow larger than what I need it to be, there is no way that I could do that. When I first started selling on Amazon, it would take me hours and hours to not only source, but then to come home and ship those items using Amazon Seller Central. It was nearly impossible. And if I was going to insist on pricing as I went, if I was going to insist on writing individual condition notes, that's just a time investment that was going to really take most of my day. So now that I'm sourcing with Scoutly, 
and uh, making good use of my scanners. By the way, that EYOYO scanner is still doing really well. I literally cannot drain the battery on that. Still very happy with that scanner. And then being able to come home and speed list all of that inventory uh, using either Acceler List or in today's example, Turbo Lister. Uh, honestly, that will save you hours and it'll save you a ton of headaches. In the case of Turbo Lister, it will send the feeds to Amazon and it also will let me know through the feed if any books caused an error. Basically, if any of those books suddenly became restricted on me and I couldn't sell them, it would stop the feed, it would create an error, and it would notify me which book did that. That saves me a lot of headaches, it saves me a lot of removals, and generally it saves me a lot of time when I can just take that book and sell it on eBay instead. And lastly, I, I don't price as I go. I set a default price, and tonight when nothing else is going on and everyone goes to bed, that's when I'll jump on Seller Central and I will uh, speed price everything using my uh, my redirector and nifty split combo just an extra tip uh, with turbo lister i can add the uh, average sales rank or the uh, number of days with sales to the end of my SKU, and that makes it super easy uh, by adding the uh, rank information into your custom SKU, you can still price and reprice extremely quickly manually just by having that information on the same page. And of course, when it comes to repricing, I still use Reprice It. I still recommend Reprice It. I still think it's the best option currently out there on the market. And not only does it help my sell-through rate, not only does it help my cash flow, but it just keeps things moving. It allows me to treat older inventory differently than new inventory. I can treat CDs differently than books. And it's just one less thing that I have to worry about that would normally take huge amounts of time. When my wife and I finalized the adoption, uh, we were now a family with a five and four year old, the youngest of which uh, was not in school yet. And when she was gonna be in school, was going to be in half day kindergarten uh, for the entire first year. So I did not have more than 15 to 20 hours a week to devote to my business. That is why I started looking at my workflow and trying to find a few extra seconds for every unit that I touched. I'll say that again. I was looking for a few extra seconds for every unit that I touched. When you are trying to maximize your workflow, a second matters. Ultimately, the struggle was that I knew that my best bet for maximizing my time was to spend more time sourcing and less time listing and shipping. In order to do that, you really do need tools, especially if you're a parent. You parents that are out there, you understand the struggle of having to take care of your child while at the same time really trying to run a business. The needs of your children uh, Quite often, they simply cannot wait and there's no getting around them. So nothing does a better job of bringing your business to a screeching halt than the needs of your child. Now, if you have a very young child, uh, like an infant, uh, the needs of that child are much different uh, than the needs of a 10-year-old and a 9-year-old like I currently have. You may only have 10 to 15 hours in a week to get everything accomplished. And if I were you, I would really focus on sourcing uh, just a little tiny bit during the week. And one of the things that I did was I dedicated one of the weekend days where I had childcare uh, and I was able to just dedicate that one day, and it was a long day, to just sourcing as much as possible. I went ahead and uh, more often than not, I combined that with a couple of library sales and made myself a route uh, along with uh, many thrift stores along the way. I made a video on how to net $100,000 a couple of years ago and uh, a lot of the concepts in that video are still 100% uh, what I do today. I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the, uh, the YouTube card for you.
Now, if you have older children, while they still have a lot of needs and you have to do things like meals and bathroom breaks, uh, that is an opportunity for you. You can still not only take care of them, but do a little more sourcing with them during the week as their attention span and their patience and sometimes their mood allows. I find it's a lot easier if I source with them and either involve them in my business or uh, you know entertain them with some of the toys there at the thrift store or some children's books while we wait. Uh, anything that I can do to just get that one or two thrift store stops in a day is pretty valuable during the week. And if you have some older children like I've got, well, you can involve them in your business. My oldest child, she can condition books. Uh, she can take off price stickers or thrift store stickers if I need it. Uh, and she can also do a little bit of scanning for me. They have a great time. I get in my sourcing. Everybody wins. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not just speaking to you parents out there. You could still have time management issues. A lot of these workflow fixes are really going to help you as well. But here's the question of the day. What are the bottlenecks in your business and what are the solutions that you've come up with to make them a little bit better? Go ahead and put in your comments below because I'm always open to ideas. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video, if you would like to see me make more videos like this one, please go ahead and give this video a like. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so now. And remember to hit that bell so that you get notifications every time a new video drops. Until next time, let's go make some money.